Welcome to Uncommon Sense, where we do our best to make it common again. I'm your host, Adrian Alquist, and today I'm joined by my dad, Dale Alquist. How are you? I'm the better for your asking. Thank you, Adrian. Great. Uh, it's someone's birthday pretty soon, and it was someone's birthday recently. That's true on both counts, and I'm sure that's a that's something you could say almost any day of the year. <laughs> that's true. Uh, well, on May 29th, it was Chesterton's birthday. We didn't talk about it, but now we are going to talk about it. And uh, how old was he on uh, May 29th? <laughs> ah, I have it right here. Uh, it's <laughs> he was 147 years old. He's doing pretty well. He is doing pretty yeah. well for a 147 year old. He is doing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, well, on June 14th, that it was the day Chesterton died. That's his feast day. We're going to call it his feast day. We are. And it is also your birthday. I don't know how many people know that, but coincidentally, the day Chesterton died in the year is, is the day that you were born. Right. I was born on the day that Chesterton died. Not exactly the same year. There was a slight <laughs> yeah. gap between the, the, the death of Chesterton on June 14th and the subsequent birth of Dale Alquist. Not that old. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that big a gap, but there was a slight gap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but that's uh, pretty providential, I would say. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? I think it's just really neat. I I and I'll use the word providential also. Yeah, nice. yeah. Well, uh, we just wanted to hit two birds with one stone by talking about his birthday and his feast day. Uh, so yeah, he was a hundred. He he was one hundred forty seven. And uh, did he say anything about birthdays? There's a lot of good Chesterton quotes about birthdays because there's a lot of good Chesterton quotes about just about anything. But I have a, I picked out a couple good ones. Uh, here's a good one. A man's birthday reminds him that he is alive. And when his, when his immediate affairs would only remind him that he was at work or at play or in business or in debt. <laughs> All right. It is a, a birthday is for everyone. It's, it's a break from the rest of their life. Everyone stops and acknowledges the fact that, that you've been born and that you, you are reminded of the fact that you've been born. And, and Chester also brings up, there's a, there's a dogma connected to, to birthdays. He says, the birthday is a dogma that no normal men deny a formula of fundamental confession and it thanks heaven by implication for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. Oh, yeah. it's <laughs> a good one. Nice. That is good. In fact, uh, you know, what, uh, one of my favorite lines to give people when they've just had a baby is, is a line of Chesterton's from uh, the Napoleon of Notting Hill. Oh, yeah. Where he talks about every time a, a new baby is born, it's as if God has created a new sun and a new moon. Because there's a new soul looking at the sun and the moon. And God doesn't have to recreate the sun and the moon. He just has to create uh, a new set of eyes to look at the sun and moon. And, and creation is accomplished all over again. That's pretty uh, amazing. I, I like that because um, it it goes to it goes to say that we are, are witnessing actually has an effect on reality. Yes. Right. That's yeah. a lovely thought. That actually is true on on a quantum level. Uh, we are we someone witnessing something actually does seem to change reality in in science as well but 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 also just uh in general uh that's definitely been a philosophical movement is 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 if a tree falls in the middle of a forest does if no one hears it does it really fall or you know does it matter <laughs> uh, i don't remember how the exact saying goes the, the, the exact saying is um if a man says something in the forest and his wife is not there is he still wrong <laughs> right <laughs> That, that was a good one. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I, I like that interpretation a lot. He, he, and God wants us to witness his creation. Yes, and, yeah. and it's it's fundamental to, to Chesterton, too, because coming into existence is something that we have not earned. We did not deserve existence, and there's only one possible reaction to the gift of existence, and that is to be thankful. And that informs Chesterton's whole life is is being thankful, being thankful for everything. Yeah. yeah. Thanks is the highest form of thought. Yeah. 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 Uh, there was another quote that he said in his autobiography, right? Well, yeah, about his own birth. Right. Oh, yes. right. Yeah, yeah. So what can you tell us about his birth, not just his birthday, but his About Chesterton's birth. own birth, we will go to the record here. This is yeah. from Chesterton's autobiography. It's a wonderful, wonderful beginning to his autobiography and, and, and truly one of the best opening lines of any autobiography. <laughs> Bowing down in blind credulity, as is my custom, <laughs> before mere authority and the tradition of the elders, 
superstitiously swallowing a story I could not test at the time by experiment or private judgment, I am firmly of the opinion that I was born on the 29th of May, 1874. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So he, he just has to rely on this evidence that he can't prove himself. Yeah. Yeah. Same with all of us. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yep. I was pulled aside by one of my junior high uh, teachers and um, on, on my birthday. And he said, so how old are, old are you? And I'm, you know, 10. I'm, I'm 10. He's like, how do you know? <laughs> are you sure you're 10? Yeah. And, uh, and he, he was saying, well, we actually have faith in our parents on that account. We, we definitely have faith on, you know, because it could be wrong, yep. but we just have faith that it, that's right. <laughs> and, and Chester you know, starts off his great testimonial with this act of credulity. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to begin with my birth date, which is an act of faith that I accepted. There's this evidence that I can't prove, mm-hmm. and and it's you know this this faith and reason in a combination, which is Chesterton's whole message the whole way. Right. Cool. Uh, well, so William Griffiths uh, talked about Chesterton's cause of death on the podcast, and it's very interesting. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. A lot of people thought it was really interesting, which is great. Uh, he's, he's such an interesting fellow, and of course, he's got that wonderful English way about him, uh, But he and he is a medical doctor, too, so it makes it uh, very, doubly interesting. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, he goes actually through the records of Chesterton's death and diagnosis and everything. Uh, but yeah, so let's talk about the reaction to his death. Yeah, that's, I think, what's really interesting. Chester was world famous uh, at the time of his death, and his death came as a great shock. They his his illness had been very short. I think Dr. Griffiths explained that he really was not ill very long, certainly in, in any uh, public knowledge. And there was a, a worldwide reaction. It was it was a major news story in every newspaper, in the certainly in the English speaking world. Uh, you can find newspaper articles about it in just the tiniest little country newspaper was mentioning Chesterton's death. When he was alive, didn't it say that he was one of the top 10 most important people alive? Yeah, there's a great like there's a great yeah. story about that uh, that uh, Gear Host has found uh, in in from the from the late 1920s saying the 10 most important people alive and Chesterton is is listed as one of them. Along with uh, with Helen Keller, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a great list. Oh, uh, we should probably go through that list someday. That'd be a good podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh but he was yeah, uh, uh, uh a literary figure of renowned statue stature, Sorry. and uh, these are statues. <laughs> and if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> there's some <laughs> statues in front of us, uh, in front of trigs. Joe. They're they're trig uh, carvings. They're great. We should do a whole podcast on trig carvings. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, he, uh, the newspapers. What's really interesting and consistent in the reports is that they were saying he's probably going to both most be remembered as a poet. Oh, okay. and, and that's so interesting that because that's wow. probably one of the things he's least remembered for. Uh, 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 obituaries hmm. don't predict things very well. <laughs> they, they, they were acknowledging the fact that that he was a, a great poet. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, that's true. The Battle of Lepanto. Yeah, Lepanto and, and Battle of the White, White Horse, Horse and, yeah. and then some of his other poems, The Donkey. We've talked about that one in the past, uh, but. You know, he, uh, his poetry was was well regarded and, and well circulated during his mm-hmm. lifetime, but you know, and f- very few of the obituaries mentioned him as the creator of Father Brown. Even though the Father Brown stories were very popular, that was not the thing he was most associated w- with in his life. Uh, you know, it was kind of one of his his bread and buddy, butter money money makers to write oh, Father yeah. Brown stories. Yeah. But he wasn't, you know, fa- creator of Father Brown dies. Hmm. You know, that's that's what you would you would think now because now, that's yeah, the thing exactly. he's most famous for. Right, uh, right. But truly, uh, tributes uh, of of great, um, you know, great eloquence from around the world and uh, obituaries written by uh, friends and admirers. I think uh, there's a couple of good stories about people when they got the news, and I think one of them was. Uh, T. H. White, great historian, when when he heard that Chesterton died, his first words were, "P. G. Woodhouse is now the greatest writer in the English language." Cool, <laughs> that's awesome. So, um, so yeah, the 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 re- reaction to his death was big, and then of course, um, you know, then of, of course you you have to have the funeral after his. Death, oh yes, right? yeah, yeah. What can you tell us about the funeral? Well, so there, he had his his local funeral where he was buried in Beaconsfield. 
And uh, just a few days after his death, I think he was buried, I, I, I believe, on, on June 18th, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. It might have been a day earlier, but uh, he... It's it's very moving story because they they uh, the funeral procession left the church, uh, Saint Teresa's in Beaconsfield. The cemetery is about maybe three quarters of a mile from the church, and the police had to create extra. They just had to make the funeral procession longer because so many people wanted to see us. Oh, so yeah. they it, it was it actually took several miles to get. The, uh, the the coffin to the cemetery because so many people wanted to pay tribute and say goodbye to their their most famous resident. Wow! Attending the funeral, I think, is is a, a interesting guest list. Certainly, the people that knew Chester very well were there, and and uh, Roman Catholic notables. But I think three names need to be mentioned who were there because these are three people that would not be together in any other circumstance. <laughs> it's the beginning of a joke. Well, yeah, <laughs> or, you'd think about backwards, it. yeah. Yeah. Um, Hilaire Belloc, of course, was there, his best friend, and it's different stories have been told about Belloc's uh, reaction, to, you know, the, the the caustic one saying that he'd sold exclusive rights to the story on, on Chesterton to four different newspapers. <laughs> yeah. But the, but the, the true story is that he he went to the pub and just cried in his beer, literally cried in his beer. Uh, he was so, so saddened by Chesterton's death. But Belloc was there. And then Aldous Huxley, who was a friend of Chesterton's and the writer of Brave New World. Oh, wow. And uh, someone who would be, of course, a, a literary figure of renowned stature in, in, already at that point, but then later in his life, too, for, for many different mm-hmm. books. But Brave New World probably being his most famous book. But even though he and Chester were not philosophical buddies, they were friends and they had great respect for each other. Why weren't they philosophical buddies? Uh, well, you know, uh, Huxley was more the agnostic, and okay. uh, but but they they agreed on many things, and they certainly had a they both had a very dim view of a highly industrialized society that uh, would become very controlling. You know. Uh, Brave New World is a very prophetic book, but it, it really predicts many of the same things that, that Chesterton predicted. Okay. Uh, you know, about a controlled uh, society that people will, will let comfort be their gods. Mm. You know? okay. And, of course, the, the birth control and the controlled birth, you know, the two different things, eugenics, right? Yeah. Um, and then the, the third one, another figure of worldwide importance that a lot of people don't know this, but Fulton Sheen was at Chesterton's funeral. He That's was, amazing. Wow. Yeah, it is amazing. He was uh, then Monsignor uh, Fulton Sheen. He was a, a professor at, at Catholic University, but he was at that point studying in England. Hmm. And you know, not long before that, he had approached Chesterton to write the introduction to his first book. And so Chesterton wrote the introduction to Fulton Sheen's first book. Wow. Wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's super cool. That is cool. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people will find that very Cool and interesting. I yeah. was doing some research at Notre Dame uh, University, the University of Notre Dame, a couple of years ago, and I found uh, a newspaper clipping that shows Fulton Sheen at Chesterton's funeral. I, I think we published it in Chesterton cool. in the Gateway yeah. Magazine. We should find it. Yeah, we'll find it. We'll put it. We'll post it again <laughs> somewhere. I, I'm not going to promise it. No, in, no, this we, time. I have it. It's in my computer. I oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So if you're on YouTube, look out for that, or if you're on our website, yeah, um, that's awesome. Well, uh, I the last thing is that a couple of weeks after his death, there was a requiem mass at Westminster College, right? Uh, at Westminster or, Cathedral, Cathedral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, Westminster Cathedral in London. And that was the big event because, you know, th- you li- literally three or 4,000 people could attend that. Mm. And uh, the um, uh, Father Brown, the real Father Brown, uh, Father John O'Connor was the, was the presider there, even though the archbishop was present. But they, they let his friend, who was the inspiration for, for Father Brown and who was the priest who received Chesterton into the church, he was the one who said the Mass. But the the eulogy or the panegyric was preached by Monsignor Ronald Knox. And Ronald Knox, a very famous convert, a writer of great stature as well, a writer who 
if I ever get finished with my Chesterton project, that would be the next writer <laughs> I want to focus on to to make him more well known. He so well, approximately eternity from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the next thirty or forty years, I want to get started on that one because he he wrote about everything, just immensely prolific, but also a priest. He gave spiritual retreats. He also wrote detective stories, and he translated the entire Bible. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And, and of convert, and I and he was one of those converts who actually converted before Chesterton because of reading Chesterton. Orthodoxy was one of the 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 books that really brought him mm. closer to the Catholic faith. And uh, and then when Chesterton was um, ready to convert, he went to Monsignor Knox for instruction. For oh, that's right. That. Yeah, so you told me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but then cool. he but he got most of his instruction though from from Father uh, O'Connor. But I, I have to say one thing, one notable thing that he said in that beautiful panegyric that he preached in Westminster Cathedral. He said he could imagine Chesterton being escorted before God with St. Francis on one side and St. Thomas Aquinas on the other side. And St. Francis, in presenting Chesterton to God, saying, with me he loved the poor. And Thomas Aquinas saying, and with me, he loved the truth. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. So there that's you go. beautiful, yeah. Good stuff. That is beautiful, yeah. So that's uh, that's Chesterton from um, birth to feast day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, thank you for all that. I I think I think that's that was more interesting than I thought this was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I think we always try to do it, make it a little more interesting than I think it's going to be. <laughs> But yeah, it was more than we bargained for, and um, and now uh, everyone we they have to wish you a happy birthday uh, because June fourteenth is coming up. Pray to Chesterton. You find uh, the prayer cards on our website um, because we want him to make we want to make him a saint. We want to have him canonized. Um, and yeah, I think that that's about it, right? Yeah, uh, maybe you want to mention the conference before we oh, sign right. off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So I should have started with that, but... Um, yeah, we'll finish with it. Yeah. Something. So, uh, the conference is also going to be better than you expect. That's true, because uh, obviously better than some people expect, because they haven't signed up yet, which is very interesting. Um, yes, so sign up, chesterton.org slash conference. Um, I, you've probably heard me talk all about all the details, but you can go there. You can go there to register, find out all the details. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, J- uh, July 29th through 31st in, in July, Chicago, just yep, outside exactly. of Chicago in Lyle, Illinois. It's, it's, people are coming together again and it, it's good. It's going to be great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the big Chesterton event. If you're a Chestertonian, that's where you're going to want to be this year. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. My, God bless. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you everyone for listening. Until next time, help us to make uncommon sense more common. <laughs>